moment. If you want to join us in the front, you can. Father, we thank you that this is your house. We thank you that this is the place of your dwelling. And so we come into your house with thanksgiving today. We come into your courts with praise. We do not take for granted your presence today, Lord. Lord, let there be a, a reverence, a wonder, and an awe that would come over our hearts in the place of your presence, in the place of your anointing, in the place of your glory. We say, this is your house. And from your house, from your altar, we bring you praise. We bring you worship. We bring you the sounds. We bring you the songs. We bring you the movement, Lord. Let it be as worship and incense before your throne. Lord, that you would be glorified in this house today. That you would be lifted up in this place today. For you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We lift up the name of Jesus in this house today. We lift up the name of Jesus. We don't gather around the name Life Center. We gather around the name Jesus. We sing to you. We glorify you today. We bless you, Lord. We honor you. Come on, let's worship. Let's sing to him. Bless his heart.
so reminded by the foundation of our Father. Let's just sing this, let's sing this verse again with that foundation, with that foundation of who he is. Thank you, Jesus. the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen and yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen and yours is the kingdom yours is the power
is the power yours. Is the glory forever. Amen. And yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power yours. Is the glory forever. Amen. And yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power yours. Is the glory.
touch it. Just to confirm this with Juliana. I felt like I had this picture of seeing the Lord. And he said, I'm making my name known in all the earth. And he's asking, will you join me? When we worship and when we pray, it has a power that we do not realize. That just like we said in the first service, the power is found in prayer. He says, send, pray that I'll send laborers into the harvest. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest field. So we're going to sing this again, but I want to take a moment for us to pray. Pray that God would send laborers into the lands of darkness and the lands between China and Jerusalem where the gospel hasn't gone yet. Those who've never heard the name of Jesus, those who don't know the name of God, pray that his name would be known in those places. Pray that we would say yes to the call to go to make his name known. So pray with me. Father, we thank you for the greatness of your name. We thank you that your name has the power to bring light into darkness. And so we speak over the dark places of the earth where your name has not yet gone. And we say, be freed, captives. Be freed in the name of the Lord. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would send forth laborers in your harvest. You send them in the dark places and break every chain.
every chain, break 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 every chain. Tried so hard to see it. it. Took me so long to believe it. That you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never learn. Give what we don't deserve. to glory 
in a few minutes here, but we're going to sing this song one last time. And I know for me, I've been hearing this question, like, why are we worshiping so long? Why do we worship so long? And I felt like the Lord was speaking to me. So maybe this is a question that some of you guys ask even coming here. And we worship for so long. But I do think it's the gift of God because He understands that we become what we behold. And wouldn't it be the greatest gift one of the greatest gifts that he can give us that in our song we become like him and sometimes we come into services and we're tired maybe we're a little hot i know it's warm in here this morning forgive us we're not making you extremely comfortable we come in we have all these other things on our mind we have the to-do list and we can say do you know what i'm just gonna sit i'm, I'm just gonna observe today but by not entering into worship, you actually miss out on an encounter with God. Yes, we're coming as priests to minister to Him, but do you understand that it's always an exchange. When we come with our rags, He comes and He gives us a new robe. When we come with our heaviness, He comes and He gives us the oil of joy and gladness. And when we come with worship, when we come and we look at him and we behold him, he opens our eyes to see him so we can become like him. Not that we would become God, but we would become like his ways. And so I want to invite you to stand with me if you can. If, if you're kneeling, you want to, you can kneel. But if you can and you would like to stand, so let's stand. Let's sing this together. But let's not sing a song. Let's sing right to him. Let's worship right at him. Let's bless the name of the Lord today. Let's glorify the one who is worthy of praise. And let's look at him. Come on, let's step back in. Every voice. Thank you. 
Come on, sing right to him right now. just the voices all across this room. We bless you, Jesus. You are the worthy one. You are the ruler of the kings of the earth. You are the firstborn from the dead. You are the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the one who was and is and is to come. You are the almighty. You're the God in the midst of the lampstands. The I am. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Just take 60 seconds, just with your own mouth, your own voice, just bless him. You can close your eyes if it helps you to do it. Just bless him today. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. We glorify the name of Jesus in this place. We lift up the name of Jesus over this city. We lift up your name, Lord. There is no other name. There is no other one. It's you. It's always been you. It'll always be you. We glorify the name of Jesus today. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. Just sing. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Take a moment. I know we're going to transition, I promise. But he's here. The one who you're looking for, he's in the room right now. The king is here. Let him fill you right now. Let his presence come and fill you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We receive of you today, Jesus. 
we receive of your presence. You said open up our mouth and you'll fill it. We open up, would you come and fill us today? We're hungry, we're thirsty. Would you come and fill us with your presence? Let your fire come even now. As we close, why don't you just put your hand on, on your neighbor or you can grab hands, however you feel comfortable. Jesus, we thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, we pray for our neighbor right now. Would you fill it today? Would you touch them? Lord, would you give them an encounter with you? Lord, we want a face-to-face -face encounter with God today. We want to see your face. We want to see your glory. Would you come and fill us today? And we bless you, Jesus. We honor you today. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just give a, 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 a thank you to the Lord. Thank you. Well, listen, before you sit down, why don't you now introduce yourself to the person you just prayed for, and we'll meet back up here in the front. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Get ready, make your way to your seats. We're going to keep rolling this morning. All right, can make your way to your seats for me. All right, ushers, could you put the lights up on this side so we can see these beautiful people over here in the corner? All right, I'm going to jump right in this morning. So... For those of you who don't know me, my name is Colt. I'm one of the pastors here. We want to welcome all of you this afternoon to Life Center Church. I know there's some new folks in the house today. Can somebody put those lights up over there so I can see these new people? Um, oh, thank you. Um, if you are new here this morning, we would love, um, if you'd be so bold to raise your hand, we would love to give you free coffee for that boldness. So new folks, go ahead and put your hands up. Let's give it up for the new folks in the house. Just keep them up. Our ushers are going to find you. Um, so keep them up, and they're going to give you a Connect card and a coffee card. You can redeem that in the lobby. And on that Connect card, please fill out any prayer requests that you have. Um, we would love to pray for you. We are a house of prayer, and we have prayer here going throughout the week. So fill that out, and we will faithfully pray for you in that manner. Um, also going on, so a really important announcement. We announced it last Sunday. Our Thrive event is coming up. So this is going to be for singles. And by the way, the definition of being single means you're not married. So you can be anywhere on the gamut, but if you're not married, come and join us for Thrive Singles event. There's the QR code. We encourage you to scan it now. There is a discounted rate till next Sunday. So this event is going to be February the 10th, and it's with Jackie Dorman and her husband David. They've come here a couple different occasions, and I would encourage you, like, 
like, no matter where you're at on your single journey, you have something to glean for these people. Like, they really, there's an anointing and a calling, and also there's a knowledge base and a wisdom in that they're dialoguing with singles all throughout the country. And so no matter where you're at, you're like, oh, I feel like the Lord say wait, or oh, I'm in go mode, I'm ready, I'm on the prowl. It doesn't matter where you are. Like, I would encourage you, especially for men, like, come, come and, and get some tips. Come and get some wisdom. Uh, don't think we have it figured out. Like, come come and learn. Come and grow. And so men, by the way, are half off. So if you're a man in the room, it's going to be less for you. And there's another bonus this time. If you sign up other single men, you can get a $100 gift card. How about that for, you know, a little, um, a little treat to dangle in, uh, in front of you? So if you sign up. If you sign up the most single men, you get a $100 gift card. And the reason is, to have a marriage, you need a male and a female. So we need the same number of men and women at this event. So come join us for that. All right, we started our Bible reading plan, so we'll put up the QR code here. We'd love for you to join us as we read the Bible together as a community. It's three or four chapters a day. Um, we have like 50 plus people on already. Come and sign up. Come and join us as we read the Bible together as a community. Also on that note, we, we have one more week left for our fast. So we just started a 21-day fast two weeks ago, last week coming up. I encourage you, finish it. Like, run the race. Finish strong. Right around this time is when it's like, oh, you know, did God really say that? Oh, like, I'll have a burger. I'll do what I want. Like, like be, like, like, seriously, like, I really think there is something to setting yourself aside during these first three weeks of the year and asking God, prepare my heart for what you want to do the rest of the year. And so set that time aside. Don't give up. Join us. We're going to be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for prayer corporately. So we'll be doing this every Wednesday. It's going to be this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Of course, we're here Tuesday and Wednesday from 12 to 2 for prayer. Tuesday night is men's group, 7 o'clock here. Aaron is going to be sharing with us his testimony, God's power, the power of prayer in his life. So we're excited to have Aaron share this um, Tuesday for men's group. And by the way, next Tuesday is women's group, Tuesday, January the 23rd. That's at 7 o'clock as well. We're here Friday night for our Encounter God service. And by the way, um, we have our Welcome to Church night coming up. So you can scan your QR code here, Welcome to Church. It's January the 31st. So if you're new to our community, and new being you've been here like a year or less, and you haven't gone to one of these, come join us. We'll have a meal together. The pastors and leaders of the church would love to sit down with you to share our heart, share our vision, to pray for you. So that's coming up on the 31st. And lastly, new announcement. We have a mom's meetup going down on February the 17th, 11 o'clock um, in the morning. Come, because we can't do 11 at night because your kids are going to, you know, be busy. So come 11 in the morning. We're going to have a potluck together. I won't be there. I, I'm saying together, but I'm not going to be there. But my wife will be. So come and join us for that. Mark your calendars. Mothers. All right. I want to bring up Megan. So Megan's going to be praying for the offering today. And let's give it for Megan. <laughs> Megan actually leaves our Thrive ministry as well. But just real quick, I just thought of one more item. We're going to be announcing life groups, by the way, next week. So we're starting life groups for the winter session. So look out for that. More details to come. Life groups will start in February, and they'll run through May this year. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the link to give should be appearing. Yep, right over there is how you can text to give. And then if you need an offering envelope because you want to give by check or cash, raise your hand, and the ushers will be around with that. Um, so when I was praying the past couple days about the verse for the offering today, uh, the Lord kept bringing up one he's brought up before, but he was saying, like, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Um, and I was just thinking what an honor it is to get to, that he allows us to steward that. Everything's his, and he entrusts us, you know, with that privilege of being able to steward it. Um, and then the other thing he kept saying, I know we all know, like, you reap what you sow. Um, and I felt like what he was saying is, like, we know the tithe is foundational, but to, to sow seeds into those things that he's called you to, to those promises he's given you, even if it's only a small seed you have above, you know, your tithe, whether it's into ministries or people doing that thing. You know, if he's called you, you know, if he's given you a vision for evangelism, if he's given you a vision for missions, you can start putting seeds in it. Because sometimes seeds take a while to grow into harvest. Um, so it's important to, like, put the seeds in early. Um, and then the Lord, you know, kind of waters it and brings it to fruition. So I'm just going to pray for the offering. So, God, we just thank you that you entrust us with stewarding your resources, God. Yeah, we just thank you for the honor of doing that. We just ask that you would give us the wisdom to steward wisely, God, that you would give us the wisdom to use your, the finances and the resources you've given us 
in a way that brings glory and honor to you. God, we just ask that we would just hold it loosely, God, that we would just have generous hearts that are ready to give when you tell us to give, God. And we just thank you for your faithfulness, God, your kindness, your goodness over our lives, God. We just ask that you would just build up a gratitude in each of us to be grateful for everything you've given us. And we just bless everything being sown, God, to just be used mightily for the kingdom. That you would give those that are even making decisions as to, to where the finances are, are invested, God. That you give them wisdom to things that bring the most fruit. And God, even as it comes in, we just ask that you would just multiply it to further your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Um, if you filled out um, one of yeah, a connect card or a check or anything, raise your hand and the ushers will be back to collect it. And now I'm going to call up Sal to introduce our guest speaker. Amen. Thank you, Megan. Wow, what an honor. It's an honor. I actually stand here humbled in introducing the next, the, our guest speaker today. You know, uh, Richie said, um, forgive us for not making you comfortable today. It's a little warm in here. But you know what? Comfortable is not something that God wants for us. When he calls us, he calls us, it's uncomfortable. He chooses to bring us closer to him deeper in where he is, deeper in the calling that he has for your life. So I don't know about comfortable. So maybe it's good that we're not comfortable. You know, I, we've been talking about the Eastern and the Western church and how comfortable we are in the Western church. But the verse that even Megan just said, the earth is God and the fullness thereof. The earth, all of it, east, west, we need to learn from our brothers and sisters on the other side of the world. I mean, what is comfortable? What is uncomfortable? What we claim is uncomfortable, sometimes people are going through much more than we are. So it is my honor and privilege here. I, I mean, I was here in the first service, and I'm shaking up here because the presence of the Lord is strong up here, and I know that it's just going to go further as this man shares. I don't know enough about him. I wish I did, and I want to get to know more of him because I know he's gone through a lot more than I have for the Lord. So I'm going to introduce Pastor Peter Shu. Would you please come up? <laughs> Would you welcome him? Come on. Let's all stand. He is the leader of a great movement in, in China, a house church movement. So he's been through a lot. Um, I'm not quite sure if he's going to continue a little bit with his, uh, with this, with what he was sharing this morning or maybe more. But we're excited. We're uh, excited. And we are looking forward to the connection with Asia and the West. Amen. Amen. I'd like to use a song as my opening prayer with you this morning. Lord, I want to give myself to you. I want to serve you forever. No matter where I may be. No matter what circumstances I face. I want to submit to your will. I'm willing to be a soldier for the Lord. I'm willing to lay down my life for you. Lord. I'm willing to be your servant. And I'm willing to serve others for you, Lord. Lord, I'm willing to give you all of me. Shushan 
，愿为主做仆人，愿为主服侍人。主啊，我愿奉献我自己。主啊，我愿永远服侍你，无论我在哪里，无论我于何境，我愿一生顺服你旨意。阿门，阿门。我在上一堂和大家分享。我是出生在基督徒的家庭中，我是第四代的基督徒。I was telling the first meeting that I, I'm the fourth generation of believers in my family. 我的呃出生的时候，我的祖母和我的母亲就我把我用白布包起来奉献给神说。And when I was born, my grandmother and mother wrapped me in white swaddling cloth and presented me to the Lord. 我把我这个小孩子献给主耶稣，由主耶稣做中宝，献给耶和华。做耶和华的小婴孩。And they dedicated me to the Lord, saying, "This is Jehovah's child. We dedicate this child to be the Lord's child." 我谢谢主，使我生在这么样一个家庭中。I'm so grateful for the family that I was born into. 呃，我一生主保守我。God has been watching over me my whole life. 我今年八十四岁了。I'm 84 this year. <laughs> <laughs> 我二十四岁，蒙主呼召。And、when I was 24, the Lord called me into the ministry. 呃，跟随着主，呃，放下世界的一切来跟随主。And I, I, the Lord called me to lay down everything I had in the world and to follow Him. 在中国，我为了服侍主，五次被抓在监狱中。Uh, I was arrested and put into prison five times in China. 一共在监狱中十几年。And I spent、uh, over ten years in prison. <laughs> 第一次是一九六四年，我二十四岁的时候。Uh, the first time was in 1964 when I was 20 years old. <laughs> 第二次是这个一九七一年。And、the second time was in 1971. 第三次是一九八二年。Uh, the third time was in、uh, 1982. <laughs> 第四次是一九八八年。The fourth time was in 1988. 第五次是一九九七年 ，and the fifth time was in 1997. 一九八八年是比利格里汉制造我们在中国培训工人。In 1988,、uh, Billy Graham had heard about the training we were doing in China. 他到中国访问的时候要见我。And he was doing a tour of China, and he asked if he could meet me. 我经过长期的祷告到北京去见他。So we prayed about it for a long time, and I decided to go to Beijing to have a meeting with him. 晚上的晚上的圣餐。Uh, we were supposed to have an evening meal together. 中午就把我抓起来了。Uh, but I was arrested that afternoon. 一关关了三年的时间。And I was、uh, in prison for three years. 但是教会不是因着我的被关押。But the church was not restricted at all through my imprisonment. In fact, the church grew even more while I was in prison. Why was Billy Graham interested in seeing me? He had heard about the underground seminaries that we had started in China. It was so amazing. In 1985, we opened our first underground seminaries. In 1986, we had seven of them. In 1987, we had 15. In 1987, we had 15. We had 15. In 1988, Billy Graham came and was arrested. In 1988, when I went to meet with Billy Graham, I was arrested. In 1988, when I went to meet with Billy Graham, I was arrested. In 1988, when I went to meet with Billy Graham, I was arrested. In 1988, when I went to meet with Billy Graham, I was arrested. In 1988, when I went to meet with Billy Graham, I was arrested. In 1988, when I went to meet with Billy Graham, I was arrested. In 1988, when I went to meet with Billy Graham, I was arrested. In 1988, when I went to meet with Billy Graham, I was arrested. In 1988, when I went to meet There were 23 underground seminaries. Satan 浇水 Although the the devil Satan tries to pour water to put out the fire of revival. 圣灵却是浇油 But the Holy Spirit pours gas. 越是逼迫，越是复兴。哈利路亚 The more persecution, the more revival. Amen. Amen. 主在人间掌权，他负他教会完全的责任。The Lord is responsible. He takes care of His church. 借着苦难来熬炼我们的信心。
through a uh, difficulty he tests our faith. He refines our loyalty and our faithfulness. Uh, we remember that the first century church in Jerusalem also <laughs> suffered persecution. And when Peter wrote to them, the apostle Peter wrote that when you suffer for the Lord, his glorious spirit is upon you. That we could have a share in the sufferings of the kingdom of God with all of the believers. So don't be afraid of being persecuted. <laughs> That's when the glory of the Lord is resting upon you. The Lord tests hearts. God uses persecution to refine us. When he tests our hearts, when he refines our hearts, we can witness the life of Jesus being manifested in our lives. And the light shines in the darkness. Uh, I, I want to share a little bit of something that happened to me in 1997. That was the last time I was arrested in China. There was a movement to bring together all of the uh, various house church networks. And we call it the Sinem Unity Fellowship. Uh, the word Sinem comes from Isaiah chapter 49 verses 11 and 12. And the Lord says, I will make all my mountains a road. Uh, and my highways shall be raised up. Behold, these shall come from afar. And behold, these from the north. And from the west. And these from the land of Syene or Sinem or China. So where are all of these people flowing to? They're going to Jerusalem. <laughs> so the back to Jerusalem movement is a, a strategy for the Chinese house church to complete the Great Commission. To bring together the church in the east and the church in the west. To a Spread the gospel all over the world. That all peoples would be the disciples of the Lord and return and receive salvation. Through all the routes of the Silk Road. That the gospel would be preached in Muslim nations, in Hindu nations, in Buddhist nations. All the way back to Jerusalem. That the number of the Gentiles in the church would be fulfilled. And all Israel would be saved. And the nations of this world will become the nations of our Lord and Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. He's the, the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. And the government will rest upon his shoulders. Through the spreading of the gospel. He shall uh, bring an end to war. He shall judge between nations. He shall decide disputes for people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. And they shall not lift up sword against nations. Nor shall they learn war anymore. That Christ brings his kingdom of peace his kingdom will reign forever. So the Sinem Unity Fellowship was trying to bring together all of the house church networks 
And we had a meeting every month that was kept secret of uh, the time and location. Sometimes we met in Beijing, sometimes we met in Shanghai, sometimes in Xi'an, sometimes in Wuhan. In uh, 1997, uh, March 16, we were meeting in Zhengzhou. <laughs> As we were beginning our meeting of these uh, church leaders, the uh, the police and like the the FBI the 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 security forces broke through the door. They had a video camera on their shoulder, and they said, "Nobody move! Nobody move!" He said, "Everybody, put your hands up." I knew all of these people who had come in because I had been arrested so often. <laughs> so they were all familiar with me. And I said, hi, how are you? Nice to see you. So as I was greeting them, my cell phone began to ring in my pocket. I was so nervous, I didn't even notice my cell phone was ringing. But the police are very smart. And they said, Mr. Xu, your phone is ringing. So I, I, I pulled my phone out of my pocket and I answered the phone. And it was Brother Yun calling me. <laughs> he said, Brother Xu, I just got back from uh, Beijing and I'm on my way to meet you right now. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not as smart as other people. <laughs> if I had been a little bit faster, a little bit brighter, I would have said, oh, it's not a good time right now. Don't come. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was just frozen. I just said, uh, uh. And uh, the policeman said to me, hey, let me borrow your phone for a moment. And he took my phone. And they uh, arrested us, put us in handcuffs, and took us off. Five years later, when I came to America, Brother Yun was also with me in America. When I saw him, I apologized. I said, I'm so sorry. If I had been a little smarter, you wouldn't have been arrested that day. And Brother Yun said, No, no, no. You mustn't worry about that. This is in God's hands. Uh, after the policeman had taken my phone, Brother Yun called my phone again. And the police answered and said, yeah, we're all here. Come on over. <laughs> Brother Yun knew that when he spoke to the guy on the phone, it wasn't, it wasn't Peter's voice. It wasn't anyone he recognized. But we decided to go anyway. And as, when Brother Yun came in, they said, put your hands up. He puts his hands up. And they said, uh, take off your belt. Why do they have us take off our belts? So that you can't run. If you start to run, your <laughs> pants will fall off. So Brother Yun began to loosen his belt and he was slowly making his way toward the window. He was standing by the second floor window. And the police officer looked at him like he, there was something wrong with him and he said, what are you doing? And he jumped out of the second story window. <laughs> Why would he do such a thing? Because Brother Yun had a, a saying that he taught people when he was training them. When Brother Yun trained uh, gospel workers, he said there are four things you must always be prepared for. You must always be prepared to preach the gospel. You must always be prepared <laughs> to run. 
So that's what he was doing when the police officer was saying, "What are you doing?" He was preparing to run. He was getting ready to make his escape. He said, "You must always be prepared to go to prison." Because if you can't escape, then you're going to be arrested. And you must always be prepared to be martyred. So he jumped out the window. He didn't, he didn't know that there were already policemen down there surrounding him, waiting for us. When he, when he jumped out the window, he almost landed on a police officer. So they came and they grabbed him, they arrested him. They took us to this uh, secretive prison where they were doing interrogations. I'm afraid we don't have enough time this morning for me to go into much detail. But uh, I experienced Shaolin Kung Fu firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> they beat me for a whole night. And they, they put me in this uh, secret prison. And I saw that uh, Brother Yun had been placed here as well. And my wife had been arrested and was there. And I was so distressed. Because I knew that no one had any knowledge of what had happened to us. Our, our, our co-workers, our missionary contacts overseas, nobody knew we had been arrested. We had been uh, carried away in secret. And everybody had been separated into different cells. And so every morning I would wake up and I would begin to pace in my cell. And as I was pacing and praying, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And said, I'm going to release Brother Yun. I said, Lord, there's steel bars over the window, steel doors. How's it going to happen? And but when the Lord spoke this to me, I, I walked over to the door of my cell and I, I felt the door handle and I, I pushed it open and the door opened. <laughs> I was so afraid. I thought, how, how can the door of the, the prison be open? So I closed it. <laughs> and I, kept, I continued to pray. And, and, and the Holy Spirit said, I'm trying to do a miracle. Why are you taking so long to obey me? <laughs> So I went back to the door and I pushed the door open. And I looked left and right and it was all quiet. And I thought, I'll go to the restroom. I didn't, I didn't actually need to use the restroom. But I thought, if there's a policeman out there and he sees me walking to the restroom, he won't think anything of it. So I walked to the restroom. And I, I'll see how, how the Holy Spirit will lead me from there. It was so quiet. So I, so I ran quickly to Brother Yun's cell. And I, I turned the handle on his cell and I opened it and it opened. The, the, the way the doors there work is the policeman can open them from the outside, but you shouldn't be able to open them from the inside. When I pushed the door open, Brother Yun was leaning against the wall. He looked and he said, ah, it's not the police, it's, it's Peter. <laughs> and he was shocked to see me. And we locked eyes with each other. And I was looking at him. I said, God is releasing you. Uh, Brother Yun has a very sensitive spirit. And he honors all of his elders. Especially in such a, a unique circumstances being in prison. He, he didn't 
take time to think it over. He just accepted what I was saying to him. So I left his cell and I went back to my cell. And I began to pace and to pray. And the word of the Lord came to me. That the king's business is urgent. This is a, a, a verse from the book of Esther. And so I, I opened my door again and I walked back to the restroom and I walked back to Brother Yun's cell. And I, there was a, the crack in the door was open just a little bit. And I pushed the door open and he was gone. My heart began to race. And I began to pray, Lord, please protect your servant. Please watch over my brother. Every moment, every second is so precious. Because as the, if the police discover he's escaping, they'll try and execute him. I went back to my cell and, and covered myself with my blanket and I began to pray desperately. I was not uh, making any noise, of course. And as I was praying, I began to hear the sound of a heavy rain pouring outside my window. How wonderful. And the, the word of the Lord came to me. And I will cover you like snow with the blankets. The rain was covering Brother Yun. When the police discovered that he was missing, they would have to put on their raincoats and their rain boots, giving him more time to get away. If they brought the canines and the dogs to find his scent, it would be washed away. And so it, this is how Brother Yun was released from prison. I stayed in prison three more years. And people have asked me, why didn't you go too? Because the Lord didn't tell me to go. And the Lord said he was releasing Brother Yun. And I knew that after Brother Yun was out, he would spread the word about what had happened to us and they could be praying for us. Uh, every day I was in there, we were doing labor every day and uh, I would face the wall and pray. <laughs> And uh, in 1991, I had completed my sentence and I was released. The day I was uh, released from prison, the brothers and sisters from the church were waiting there to receive me. They said, uh, Brother Liu from Germany is calling you to check on you. Uh, Brother Leo in Germany has heard that you were released from prison today. And I was trying to remember who do I know in Germany and who's named Leo that would think to call me. <laughs> who was that? Because I had been accustomed now for three years of, of not speaking very much, so, so it didn't even occur to me to ask them, who was it? They just kept telling me and telling me and telling me. And I realized, oh, it's Brother Yun calling me. Uh, Brother Yun's last name is Leo, and what in the world is he doing in Germany? <laughs> and so I'm so grateful to God that in one moment of his leading, in one minute of submitting to his word, God worked a miracle. He released Brother Yun. Like one of the river stones that David used to kill Goliath. He sent him out of prison. Sent him out of China. Sent him into Europe. Sent him into Germany. 
And Brother Yoon began to spread the vision of back to Jerusalem in Europe and in Germany. I give thanks to God. The Lord is sovereign over all. It's not that when everything is going smoothly in our lives that that's necessarily the blessing of the Lord. When we're in difficulty, when we're in persecution, God has a beautiful purpose for those things. So we don't need to look at our circumstances. We don't need to look at ourselves. We don't need to look at what other people say. Doesn't matter what kind of circumstance we're in. God has a purpose for it. And it's above anything we could think or ask or imagine. Praise God for His great grace. That was, in, that was in 1997 when I was in prison. Uh, many uh, foreign missionaries began uh, to be concerned about us. Uh, President Clinton at the time brought uh, three different uh, religious groups to China for a tour. And they began to request my release from prison directly from President uh, John Zeming. Uh, it, the result was I had originally been sentenced for 23 different crimes. The, uh, the first one was uh, I was to be sentenced, I was to be executed. Uh, they, they commuted it to two life sentences. Uh, then just uh, prison without parole. And then they reduced it from 20 years to 15 years, and 23 times my sentence was reduced. And, and the, the final sentence was I was labeled a counter revolutionary, and I was sentenced to four years. And from 1997. China began to open up more and more to the West, and the law was changed. And, and they even got rid of this uh, anti-counter-revolutionary. So since that was no longer a crime, then I had to be released. They said, no, you, uh, you stir up the peace of the society. You're a troublemaker. So in the end, they, they just kept me for three years. And so when uh, President Clinton was leaving Beijing after his tour of China, he met with missionaries in Beijing, and he told them that if Brother Xu when he gets out of prison, if he wants to come to America, we'll make that happen for him. From the time I was 24, I had been following uh, the Lord. I didn't have a, a, an ID card. I didn't have any form of identification. I had been in prison many times. I thought, how can I ever get a passport to go to America? So but uh, my American missionary friends kept telling me about this opportunity. I, I said, no, I have too much to do here in China. Uh, after Clinton, when Bush became president, uh, they, it was communicated to me through my relatives that uh, President Bush was also willing to help us come to America. And so I began to pray about this and, and ask the Lord, what should I do? And the church was praying. 
，这样的我不再细说了。神就给我办了一个护照。And I won't go into the details of how it happened, but the Lord arranged a passport for me. And then four days later, I was in America. And on May 31st, I flew. To New York City. The brother who was with me on the airplane told me. Uh, he said, the, uh, not all of the congressmen in America are Christians. They're going to send reporters uh, to ask about your release from China and to interview you. And so you need to have a statement prepared. And so I was so afraid. Because some of the members of Congress were upset that my release would compromise the relationship between the U.S. and China. So I didn't want to make more trouble for the American government. And so I was thinking, what will I do if the reporters come and put the cameras in my face? I could say no comment. <laughs> that, that just seemed like such a prideful thing to say, though. And so rude. <laughs> so I thought, well, what could I say then? And the Lord put it in my heart. I thought, if, if I get off the plane and there are reporters waiting for me, I'll kneel down. And I'll look at the cameras and I'll say, Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come. And your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. And I would cite the Lord's prayer. And I, as I prepared for that, I had such a peace in my heart. When I got to the airport in New York, they, they took us through the special green line into a very small office. There were just a couple of people working there. And we had our credentials from the United Nations. And nobody talked to me. They stamped it with a bunch of different stamps. There was one reporter from a, an Asian news outlet. And he led me out of the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, a, 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 pl a plain clothes policeman. <laughs> Sorry, now you're going to wonder if anything I've said has been true, right? Uh, but anyway, it was a plain clothes policeman who led me out of the airport. And, and there were many people there. But, but uh, after we got out into public, I, I couldn't even see that person disappeared. Oh, what should I do now? And we just followed the crowd out the door. And as we left the uh, went out the airport door, there was an elderly couple there waiting to receive us. And this is how God allowed me to come to America. I, I say often that I came to America not to escape difficulty. But I want to share what God has done in China and the vision God has given the Chinese church with my American brothers and sisters. So that the gifts of the church in the West and the gifts of the church in the East can work together. That uh, the, the, the strengths of the church in the West 
that they can strengthen and empower the human resources that are so abundant in the church in the east. That the army of the Lord would be released out of the east. To go and to preach the gospel into uh, Buddhist nations, into Hindu nations, into Muslim nations, back to Jerusalem. That the number of the Gentiles in the church would be fulfilled and all Israel would be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, time passes so fast. Uh, I don't know if uh, perhaps I should maybe take a question or two if anyone has any question that you would like to ask. Yeah, I just had a great peace in my heart, and I didn't feel that the Lord said that He was releasing me. Yeah, maybe this brother, and then you, brother, in the back. Yeah, go ahead. I've been here for 20, 20 years now. Because I can't go back to China. Billy Graham. Billy Graham is <laughs> a good friend. No, I never had the opportunity to meet him before he passed. There were many different reasons why. Uh, some international political uh, reasons. Yeah, brother. You have a desire to uh, woman to go the I was just sharing with Pastor Bill that uh, on the 16th I'm flying to Cambodia and then to Thailand to meet with church leaders who are coming out of China to meet with me there in uh, Cambodia and in Thailand. I have a very strong desire to help your church connect with those believers in uh, Cambodia and Thailand. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, the Chinese house church has missionaries in every country along the Silk Road. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Maybe a couple more. <laughs> Look up my brother in the hat there in, in the middle. Uh, this is the Okay. In the first service, I, I shared a song uh, that when we pray more, we have more power. When we pray less, we have less power. And when we don't pray, we don't have any power. So we must pray continually. 
When we pray, we, we move the hand of God. That all nations would come and bow before him. So we have to pray the, pay the price in prayer. The Lord hears our prayers. And God gives us his heart. He deposits it into us. Amen. Yeah, Yes, they are. He does have kids and they are in the ministry. I have six children. Two of them are in Los Angeles. And they're in the ministry. And I have one daughter who's still in China. And I, uh, my three youngest are living in Colorado. Jimmy. Uh, uh, yes, you, I'm sorry, sister. Uh, <laughs> 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 Okay. So what God did in the in the Chinese church was that he forced the church to go underground because of persecution. And and in that he made the church return to the first century model of church. Uh, which was persecuted, of course, by the Romans. But also internally suffered persecution from Judaism, from the Jews. So because the disciples were afraid of the Jews, they were, with the, they were in the, the room with the doors locked. That's the, the situation where God stirred up revival. No money, no position, no power. Just a simple heart to, to love God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe just one more, guys. Uh, so many good options. <laughs> oh man! Uh, two, two, two more. This this brother and this this young <laughs> sister here. Uh, 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 first of all, we, we trust God, and second of all, we submit to Him. God does not permit that even one of our hairs falls from our head apart from Him knowing it. And everything that the Lord allows to happen to us, we receive with thanksgiving. Actually, it's when you're in difficulty, it's actually very sweet. Amen. Amen. Okay. So that's why I, uh, the story I told in 1997, we were having a meeting about taking the gospel back to Jerusalem. And so from appearances, it looked like, okay, well, we were trying to go out and now we're all arrested. Is, is God not accomplishing his purposes? But when we submit to God's sovereignty, he flung Brother Yoon out of prison. <laughs> and he brought me out of prison here today in front of all of you. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Um, we're going to be around a little while longer, but I want to respect everyone else. So, Pastor Sal, we'll be up here if you have another question and, and it's burning in your heart. Feel free to come up here. Wow, thank you. Just, um, Pastor Shu, could you just pray for us? 
Give me your stand, please. I mean, I think we have so much to learn just from you, just what you shared today. Um, what God wants to do in, in America, on the earth, I think we need to repent. At least I need to repent. I'm, I'm going to speak for myself. I need to repent. Like, God is doing so much, and yet we are so comfortably seated in our, even in our church here. And we complain about when God doesn't answer our, our prayers. Today we're being challenged. You know, last week we prayed there's more in 24. What does more look like? We want to do the will of the Father. Would you pray for us so that we could hear his voice and we could yield to his calling? Can you do that for us? Amen. Do you so, woman, can she say, Amen? When the disciples asked, Lord, teach us to pray. You taught us the Lord's Prayer. First of all, we, we pray to our Father who is in heaven. What is the content of our prayer to our Father? First, that everyone would hallow his name. Second, that his kingdom would come. Third, that his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. These are the hopes that God wants to deposit into our hearts. That it would become our prayer back to him. Give us our day, this day, our daily bread. That when we live on the earth, we're not living for anything else. Only, only that God's name would be hallowed by all people. Only that God's kingdom would come. Only that God's will would be done on earth. As it is in this is what we are living for. Forgive our debts as we forgive those who sinned against us. He had, the, the Lord has forgiven all of our debts. We have to forgive everyone who has offended us. The, the Lord's first prayer from the cross was, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. We have to forgive our enemies. We have to forgive those who persecute us. And pray for those who persecute us. And this way is the way that we bring the government of heaven to earth. And this is how we hallow his name. And this is how all of the nations will come to worship our God. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because we're living in the glory of his kingdom. So Satan has no place to hurt us. My Lord, my God, bless everyone here this morning. Father God, let the army of the Lord arise from this place. Let the army of the Lord be sent out of this place. God, let them touch your heart and move your hand in prayer in this place. That all the nations would turn to you. 
that you would overturn the forces of Babylon overturn, overturn, overturn that the new Jerusalem would be established in this place bless this church Father bless everyone who's a member of this church Father Lord God stir up the love and compassion the faith that they need to walk into what you're calling them to Lord God give them strength and power to grab on to your vision for this church to walk into it and to fulfill every calling that you've placed on this church Father God connect them with every part of the body they need to be connected with to fulfill your purpose bless this church Lord God that through our prayers the glory that awaits this church is greater than the glory that they've experienced up to now thank you Lord Jesus we praise you we worship you we pray in your holy name in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Amen Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this gift that you've given us today. Your son, Peter. Father, thank you that he's brought forth the word that challenges us to be more like you. To move when you call, to obey when you speak. But I, I ask that you just protect them, guide them, watch over his family. And Father, I admire the fire that still burns in his heart. More, Lord, more of your fire. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Father, would you grant them, would you grant them, Lord God, that which he's praying for, the vision that he's looking towards, Lord God, that he would see it. That he would see it, Lord God. Show up in his life, Lord God, in greater ways. I just want to call Colt, Richie, come up. My wife, Jules. Just if you if you feel anything for Pastor Shu. Yeah, we just we're so honored to to be here today. We thank you, Father. If everybody could just stretch your hands out. There's Pastor Shu. God, we thank you, Father. Even today, Lord, that that what he saw, that what he's prayed, that what he's given his life to, Father, that there would be a manifestation, even in this city, in this nation, in this place, Lord, of the nations of the earth streaming to Jerusalem, of the nations of the earth crying out for the Father to come, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done in every tribe, in every nation, in every tongue. We receive your word today, Pastor Peter. We respond. I want to encourage each and every one of you. Would you respond today to this word? Would you respond today to this vision given by God, placed in this man? Would you respond by burning for the nations of the earth? Lord, I thank you for the nations represented in this very room, represented in this city. And I pray, Lord, would you start a fire and a flame just as you did in this man. Would you do it in our hearts for your kingdom come, for your will be done. God, would you start a fire and a flame for the nations of the earth. Stir faith in our hearts, Lord, that you would draw all men and women unto you. In Jesus' name. Would you bless his family, Lord? We pray for his children, for his whole household, Lord, that you would be with him, encourage him. You pour it over them, Lord, that you'd continue to open an effectual door. We just speak strength, strength over him. Your word says that 
Young men grow tired and weary youth, they stumble and fall. But those who wait in the Lord shall renew their strength. You shall lift them up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Lord, I thank you for the legs and feet of perseverance for Pastor Peter, that he would run his race to the very end with strength, with victory. Lord, we thank you. We honor you today. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord that has been released today. We thank you for Jesus being made known. That he is the comforter. He is the deliverer. He is the great I am. And Father, we've seen the witness through this son that you've brought here into this house. And we have been challenged and the spirit of conviction has entered our hearts and father during this time of prayer and fasting lord we ask that you would make our hearts pure and our hands clean god that we would know the calling of god upon each one of our lives that prayer is the greatest gift that you've given us to commune with you daily as Pastor Shu does, we pray a great increase of the spirit of intercession. That we would see your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for Brother Shu. Thank you for the gift of God in his life. Thank you for the impartation as your word went forth. We thank you that as this day has come, God, that we will be changed through the proclamation of the gospel, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, thank you, Brother Shu, for the man of God that you are, in Jesus' name. And Father, we lift up our brothers and sisters in China. But uh, would you continue to strengthen them, Lord God? Would you continue to keep them on a course, Lord God, that you have them, Lord God? Father, that you would just strengthen them, Lord God. Even send messengers, different people, Lord God, to just send them, to strengthen them in hope, Father. Even now as we speak, Lord God, would you baptize them with hope, Lord God? Jesus. Strengthen them, O Lord. May they never lose sight of you, Lord God. Be magnified. Be magnified, Lord. Pour out the Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, we're going to go into worship. If you need to go, we bless you. This can be your formal dismissal uh, but if you feel in your heart you need to respond to this word and you just we're not going to have a ministry team come up we just feel like this needs to be something between you and the Lord and you want to come to the front and just have an outward response to say yes to this we invite you to do so so Lord we thank you I thank you for this congregation I thank you for this family and as a house we say yes Lord we say yes to what you're doing we say yes to this call we say yes to paying a price to paying the price for this generation so that a generation can come to the knowledge of Christ. Would you let your grace come over us today to empower us to do what you've called us to do in Jesus' name. And even as you all, just go ahead and come to the front, those that, as Rich called it, if you'd like to come up and pray. But I really feel there's an intercessory type of spirit right now in the room. And even as we go into this time of worship, as we close in worship, I believe the Lord is going to put different people groups and nations, different callings. There is a clarity in this hour. 
There is a clarity, just as it came to Pastor Peter, a clarity on the call, a clarity on, on, on the people, and, he, and he's continued to stay the course. So I pray today, even as, even as each of you come up, that, that perseverance that was deposited today, that it would be deposited on you, that that clarity of purpose and call, that it would burn bright in your heart. And Lord, we pray even for our prayer lives in this church, Lord, would you, would you increase our hunger and thirst for the living God? Would you increase our sensitivity in prayer? Would you remove every bit of complacency? Would you remove every bit of passivity, knowing that you are moving in our midst? So God, we worship you. We worship you. Even as you come to the front, just, just stretch your arms out before the Lord. We are not, we're not here looking for more fervor. We're here looking for his face. And with his faith comes further, comes passion, comes clarity, comes hope, comes purpose. So God, we seek your face. Lord, raise up intercessors in this city that would burn for you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, let's worship him.
He's the Prince of Peace, the Omnipotent. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. He's radiant. The Almighty God. He's Counselor. He's Counselor. He's Mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace, the Omnipotent.
Yours is the power. Yours is the glory 